When you picture the Martian sky, you probably think of a rusty tone blanketing everything, as if the whole planet were stuck in an eternal reddish late afternoon. And most of the time, that image is right. But here's the twist. On rare occasions, NASA's own cameras have caught a subtle blue in the Martian sky, and sometimes a very noticeable blue around the sun at sunrise and sunset. What makes such a dry, dusty world show for an instant a color that reminds us of home? Today, we're going to understand why Mars is almost always red, and why, every now and then, it turns blue. The key lies in the atmosphere. Geological evidence suggests that, in the distant past, Mars had a thicker atmosphere, possibly more like Earth's. Today, that picture has changed completely. The composition is dominated by carbon dioxide, about 95%, and the density is extremely low, roughly 1% of sea level pressure here on our planet. In other words, Mars's air is thin, cold, and poor in the gases that, on Earth, help scatter light in a way that makes the sky blue. That alone changes the whole way sunlight interacts with the Martian environment. On Earth, the sky is blue mainly because of Rayleigh scattering. Particles and molecules much smaller than the wavelength of light scatter the short wavelength colors, blue and violet, more efficiently in all directions. Because our eyes are more sensitive to blue than to violet, and some violet is absorbed by ozone, the result is a vibrant blue dome above our heads. On Mars, this mechanism is weak. With extremely thin air, there are fewer gas molecules to scatter light the Earth way. The effect that dominates there is different. The interaction of light with dust suspended in the air. And what dust is that? Very fine grains, about a micrometer in diameter, rich in iron oxides, the famous rust that stains the planet red. This dust is so light that it can stay floating in Mars's feeble air for days, sometimes weeks. The planet's lower gravity, about 38% of Earth's, helps keep those grains aloft for longer. At that size scale, the scattering that takes over is closer to what's called my scattering, when the particles are comparable in size to visible light's wavelength. Instead of boosting blue the way Earth does, Martian dust favors orange and reddish tones and can scatter light more directionally creating that rusted atmosphere look that dominates most of the sky. That doesn't mean, though, that Mars is a one-note world. At dawn and dusk, when sunlight travels a longer path through the atmosphere, something curious happens. The immediate surroundings of the solar disk can turn bluish. Rovers like Spirit, Opportunity, and Curiosity have captured this show in images that became iconic. Why does the blue show up right there? Because the dust absorbs and scatters reddish light more efficiently along that path letting the bluish components slip through, preferentially right along the line of sight near the sun. It's, in a way, the reverse of Earth. Here our sunsets are red. There, the sun's outline can glow blue. This behavior isn't just an aesthetic quirk. It holds clues to Mars's history and climate. The constant presence of iron-rich dust speaks of a planet sculpted by chemical weathering and wind erosion for billions of years. Dust storms can sweep across continents, dim the sun, and plunge daytime into gloom. At other times, and in other regions, the atmosphere can be relatively clear, always in quotes, because clear there still means far more dust than we're used to. These swings in the amount and size of the grains suspended in the air subtly change how light scatters and, with that, change the color of the sky. Beyond natural conditions, there's a second factor that can pull the Martian sky toward blue in images, the color processing done by the science teams. A striking example came from a 360-degree panorama captured by the Perseverance rover. To build the mosaic, 96 images were stitched together, recorded by the Mastcam Z cameras. Systems designed not only to shoot at high resolution, but also to allow fine adjustments in saturation and contrast. By enhancing certain tones to highlight features of the terrain and atmosphere, the horizon took on a light blue cast, and the rocky landscape looked visually close to a terrestrial desert. The effect is intentional. It helps scientists see textures, veins, subtle changes in air opacity, and even variations in mineral composition that, in the natural look, would be harder to spot. It's important to understand what these adjustments mean. They aren't makeup in the sense of deceiving. They're analysis tools. In many planetary missions, images as close as what the human eye would see coexist with versions with enhanced colors or balanced for Earth light. In Mars's case, applying a white balance similar to what we use day to day can make the scene feel more familiar, making it easier to compare with known environments on Earth. 
It's no coincidence that scientists often compare these panoramas to Chile's Atacama Desert, and it's not just about looks. The Atacama, extremely dry and rich in rocky areas, is used as a testing ground for robots and instruments that later go to Mars. The visual similarity reinforces the value of those trials. Lighting, textures, and dust really do echo what the probes find out there. Back to Perseverance. In that specific panorama, the sky looked bluer for two combined reasons. First, the atmosphere at that moment was relatively less loaded with dust, which reduces the typical reddish coloring. Second, the team applied color enhancements to underline contrast in the ground and air. In short, there was a natural component, cleaner sky, amplified by processing that brings out scientific information. The result may sound surreal to anyone used to Mars's rusty palette, but it's valuable for the day-to-day -day work of investigation. By contrast, the bluish sunsets recorded by Curiosity are essentially natural phenomena, with no need for enhancement for the blue to appear around the solar disk. There, the combination of the long path of light, the typical size of the dust grains, and the way they scatter and absorb different wavelengths creates the bluish signature all by itself. It's a reminder that the Martian atmosphere is dynamic and that colors on planets are always a conversation between light and matter. So why do colors vary so much across the rest of the sky? Think of it like this. When dust dominates, the sky closes in with warm tones. During periods of lower dust, smaller and fewer particles leave more room for blues, especially if we're looking with sensitive cameras and color adjustments that bring out subtleties. Sometimes, an almost imperceptible change in the average size of the suspended grains, larger or smaller than a micrometer, already alters how different colors are scattered. On Mars, the seasons and winds also redistribute dust, and different regions can show different opacities on the very same day. It's in this dance of light and dust that the charm of seeing a bit of Earth on Mars lives. When a color-enhanced panorama reminds us of a desert here at home, it's not just a visual coincidence, it's also an invitation to notice geology in action. Stratified rocks, dunes, gravel, veins that hint at ancient water. Boosting saturation and contrast, although it isn't what the eye would see on the spot, can make it easier to identify minerals, reveal layer boundaries, and sometimes point to subtle changes in the dust haze. In science, spotting these signals quickly makes a difference when deciding where to drive the rover and which targets to study up close. At the same time, it's good to keep our feet on the ground. The idea of a blue sky on Mars may sound comforting, but it shouldn't mislead us about the actual conditions. It's a hostile world. Intense cold, elevated radiation, storms capable of darkening the day, and an atmospheric pressure that, for us, would be like being on the top of a mountain. Even on clear days, the atmosphere keeps chopping up the light in a way very different from what happens here. The bluish beauty that sometimes shows up in images is a brief window, a moment when the physics of dust and light allow a hint of familiarity. If we project ahead and imagine astronauts living on Mars, it's fair to suppose those rare blues will carry a special emotional weight. After weeks staring at sepia horizons, seeing a blue outline around the sun might light up memories of the home planet. What's interesting is that, beyond the symbolism, mastering how to read these colors will be vital for survival itself. Understanding when the air is more loaded, when visibility drops, when dust starts to rise, all of that is also read in the sky's palette. In the end, the question, why does Mars sometimes turn blue, has two complementary answers. The first is physical. The behavior of light in a rarefied atmosphere, with ultrafine dust rich in iron oxides, favors reddish tones most of the time but allows blue near the sun at sunrise and sunset. When the light's path is longer and the dust lets through more blue along our line of sight. The second is instrumental. When scientists enhance colors, adjust white balance, or saturation in mosaics, as in that 96-image panorama from Perseverance made with Mastcam Z, certain subtleties become more visible, and the sky can look bluer than it would to the naked human eye. On some occasions, those two factors add up. An unusually clear day on Mars plus processing designed to highlight details produces images that remind us of a terrestrial desert. Maybe that's what makes these photos so hypnotic. They aren't just records of a distant place, but careful translations of how light converses with a world different from ours. On Mars, colors tell stories of geology, climate, storms, periods of calm, the work of instruments, and human sensitivity in the face of the unknown. And when, in the middle of the red, a shy blue appears, it's as if the planet whispered, 
I also have nuances you're still learning to read. If you enjoyed this trip through the Martian sky, leave a like. It helps the channel a lot, and take the chance to subscribe and share with a friend who also loves Mars. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.